and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm finally getting a chance to do the year-to-date results for last year, 2021. Been a busy month for me to start out 2022, and I've been wanting to get this out there so people can see on an annual basis what you can earn. Uh, so this is advanced trader results, an average risk of around $2,700 per trade. It was a good year. Uh, we'll go over what we did here shortly. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me at Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype as well. So we, there's four quarterly earnings season. We're at the beginning of earnings season for, um, or the middle, I should say, of earnings season for the first quarter. Uh, there's four quarterly earnings seasons a year, so those are the busy times to trade. But we get trades all year long. We just have more trades to do in earnings season. So 2022, it's hard to believe, is already here. And if you haven't thought about your goals for this year, particularly how you want to up your game as a trader this year, make more money, do better, then you better get to it. I find the weekends are a good time to sit down, write down your goals. I'm really big on writing stuff like on a piece of paper. I have a lot of uh, empty notebooks I always buy so I can write stuff in them. It's important to keep track of what you're doing and set your goals and write them down. Again, being realistic counts. How are you going to get there? Or if you want to trade with me, you would do the class. You would learn first. Then you would join the live trading room. Then you would be active and so on and so forth. So there's a process to do this and it's really, really important. Now I plopped this in here. This was one of the trades we did here. I'll show you this right now. This was PayPal. Uh, we did this the other day. This was a gap. Again, what will you learn in the class? You'll learn what is a gap, how to find it, how to rate it. And then also this was a short. So the stock closed here, gap down, fell. We did a day trade in this. The entry was 136.70. Risk was 31.20. Risk a little bit more in this because it, it really just set up and had a bigger stop than anticipated. But try to keep your risk the same. Try. This is not exact science. So exit was 131.50. Profit 4,160. Nice trade. Again, you could have taken 100 shares of this. Either way, you see the drop from almost 137 down to 131, $5 plus, almost six. So you see how this is how you can make money with size when you get the move of the momentum, which you see here, this is the daily chart. It's a daily chart here of PayPal, okay? So again, I call that trade of the room live. You could have been there, you could have been participating, you could have done it, people in the room did. So that is what we do. And then this was going back now more than a year. We started out 2021, and again, we were almost a year through COVID, but things really didn't get back to normal. They got back to normal in the market. The market rallied from those March 20 lows, but they really didn't get back to normal in the economy. Uh, but we did longs, we did shorts, and this was, again, the beginning part of 2021. Uh, most of the trades that we do are shorts, but some are longs. And, and I try to focus on one thing a day. If I'm trading a lot, if I'm doing multiple things in one day, then I'm usually having a difficult day, which you can see here on the 6th and the 11th. Easiest days where I do one thing and done. Uh, like Netflix, that was a good one there on the 12th. So then the second week here of January, boom, boom, boom. Just hit it, hit it, hit it. Nice week. Wells Fargo was a nice trade on the 15th. Again, this is more than a year ago now. IBM, we always have good luck with IBM. That was a winner. Apple, Verizon, Boeing, and the SPY. But a lot of volatility in the market this year, 2022, more so than last year. But we still do trades in the market when we see them. Again, these are all trades that are day trades on margin, on margin, okay? Uh, and we will do the market. Now, if you want to do uh, less size, you can do less size. But the market has a tight spread, even though it's expensive. So I, that is nice to do for smaller stops. QCOM was a winner. Then the fifth, we did it. That didn't work out that day. We did the diamonds. Apple and IBM lost, then we did Twitter, which ended up being a huge trade, although the first trade was a stop on the 10th. Then we did the SPY and SAVE was a big one on the 11th. Disney, IBM lost, Twitter was a big winner on the 12th. Close of the 15th, Twitter was a nice winner on the 16th. If I don't see anything that meets my criteria, we won't do any trades. And that's another thing, focus, focus, focus. If there isn't any gaps that meet my criteria, I do not trade. That is an important piece of it. You know, and again, we don't trade all day. I mean, we're done in and out, in and out. I call it chunking it out. You take the trade, get the move out. Take the trade, get the move out. Footlocker was a win the 26th spy, DDD, Rost. Uh, retake of the spy there on the 4th. This is into March. Again, this was towards the end of earnings season, then first quarter last year. Oracle were to Lily, spy, no trades in the 17th. 
Apple was a huge winner. The 18th, Nike, no trades on the 22nd. Did a bunch of things in there. GIS, haven't done that in a while. Apple, Netflix, JPM. A lot of movers in there. Apple one, Lulu, off for Easter week. It's not good to trade around the holidays. It's usually slow. Then fast loss, Apple one, Spy was a winner, BBBY break even. We haven't done that in a while either. Then again, getting into April, C loss, Apple one, Boeing was a nice winner on the 16th. No trades in the 19th. IBM was a winner. We needed two trades in Netflix. That didn't work out right. We did it the second day. INTC was a nice winner and easy. No trades the 26th. UPS was a big winner on the 27th. I remember that bar. I remember that, that, that gap. Starbucks won and Microsoft on the 28th. eBay was a winner on the 29th. Twitter, first trade lost, second trade won. Then another winner on Twitter. Microsoft won. No trades in the 5th. Then the 6th was a tough day, but we did have a winner in Etsy. Then the 7th was BYD, which was crazy. Uh, did end up having a big winner in that after several retakes, and Shaq won that day. QQQ's won on the 10th. And then into May, now we're in second quarter, second quarter earnings season. Microsoft needed a retake. Huge trade in the SPY, huge trade in Target. Baba did not work at all. Disney worked, Microsoft was a winner, and T. T was a nice one and an easy one too. Then it, towards the middle of May, we did the market, which did not work. We did AA, which is a nice winner. Cisco lost, KSS won, no trades on the 21st. BYND was a winner. 25th, we did Shaq, that didn't work. DY was the big winner that day. JWN, which is Nordstrom won, DLTR won, HPQ won the 28th. Then in June, we had two losers. Amba lost on the second, Apple won. Then we were off for the first week of June. Then we did Stitch Fix, which didn't work, Apple. Then we ended up doing the market a few times, Microsoft. Lily worked, Apple was a winner. This is now June 14th. Got into the middle of June, no trades on the 15th. Oracle won, no trades on the 17th. JPM and Spy were winners on the 18th, no trades again on the 21st. Part of really focus, really got to have more winners than losers, and a lot of times that does take focus. Apple was a retake, but a huge winner then. Q's won, KBH won on the 24th. FDX won, SPY lost, Q's won, no trades on the 29th. Apple was a winner, and STZ break even. Mu won, Apple won, and then off for July 4th week. Then getting into July was earnings season. Good, good quarter. Uh, Boeing won, BAC won, Netflix won, Diamonds won, Netflix won again. LVS one, INTC one, LVS one, UPS one, Cake one, PayPal two in the PayPal. Um, and again, good period there. No trades on the 2nd of August. T2 was a winner. SPY one, CVS one in the 5th, EXPE one, BA one. No trades on August 10th. WW one, Baidu was a winner. Then we had another Baidu the next day. CCL lost. Baidu and Q's one, BA one. Did the Q's, Target lost, and a big winner in the BA in August 19th. No trades on the 20th or 23rd. Again, nothing met my criteria. We lost on the 24th, came back on the 25th, had two nice solid winners. Urban and JWN, DLTR was a winner on the 26th, Peloton was a nice one on the 27th. No trades on the 30th, and Zoom was a winner on the 31st. Then September, getting into the fall period of this is 2021, no trades on September 1st. Chewy lost, Boeing lost, Zoom lost, and then we had a winner in Chewy, but that was a rough day. This is right around Labor Day. Spy lost, BYND, huge winner then for the third. BA won two trades of the Spy, but it won. No trades on the ninth. Off for that week in September. It was on vacation, and the 20th was the QQQs. Actually, I realized here we did, we did do in the market a lot. I guess we did last year. No trades in the 21st, FDX won. Then we had another FDX the next day. One winner, one loser. Nike won, QQQs won. Big QQQs trade on the 28th. No trades on the 29th. And KSS was a winner on the 30th. October, no trades on the 1st. Started out with a good winner on Facebook. No trades on the 5th. And, you know, it's funny because I don't think I'm hard to follow. 
Many, many people in the run trading rooms are hard to follow. One, they trade all day, and two, they do too many trades all day. It's really just, I think, so easy to follow me. Either I like something or I don't. And if I like something, you know exactly what it is. Or I like two things, and that's it. Like, I'm very, very, very much black and white and on top of what I like or whether I like anything at all. NVIDIA was a winner on the 7th, no trades on the 8th, closed on the 11th. Facebook, one winner, one loser. 13th was closed, BA won. Facebook won, Zillow won. Apple and Spy were winners, break even on the 20th. IBM won, INTC was a winner, and Facebook. And then getting into the end of October, BYND and Facebook did not work. Then the 26th, Apple was the winner in Facebook. Microsoft, first trade lost, second trade won on the 27th. Offer a long weekend on Halloween, Spy and uh, ZG won then on the 3rd of November, and then IBM was a winner on the 4th. And then we got into the fall. This is earnings season now, fall 2021. Peloton loss, BA big winner, then another Peloton winner, another PayPal winner, no trades the 10th, Disney big winner on the 11th, that was earnings, I think. 12th, no trades, BA, two trades, one break even, one big winner. BA, that stock can really move. HD was a huge winner. Visa was a huge winner in the 17th. Cisco was a winner. Footlocker, big winner. QQQ's winner. NVIDIA, didn't work. Zoom, huge winner again. I mean, that's the benefit of earnings season when you get these Jai Mungo moves. I mean, it's just so fabulous and fun to trade earnings season. It makes it a lot easier to make a lot of money. Diamonds won in Facebook on the 30th. Apple won no trades on December 2nd. We did Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Then um, I just kept going. That was the third and sixth. Apple was the winner on the seventh. Stitch Fix lost. JPM won. Then we did Boeing, Boeing, Boeing three days in a row. <laughs> that was back in December. Then we did the Spy in the 14th. Boeing won again on the 15th. Then we did it again on the 16th. I mean, it was just there. Um, sometimes things just get dumped in your lap and you're like, well, let's just take it. Adobe lost, Spy lost, and then we had a big winner in the Spy right before Christmas. Then we did have a loser in the BA on the 20th, but the Spy won and the Qs won. No trades to 21st and was off for the rest of the year. So average risk per trade is $2,700 a trade. It's one of these things where you can set your own risk based on the size of your account or your experience. If you have questions, you can always, always ask me, but you can trade with a beginner account I think that's in something important that people need to know. So let's talk about buying power a little bit. Again, these are trades on margin. So for example, if a $40 stock price, you take 200 shares, you would need what? Not $8,000 in cash. You would need $8,000 in buying power, which you can take with a $2,500 prop account if you want to open one. Because a prop account gives you 10 to 1. So you'd have $25,000 in buying power with a prop account like that. Again, if you have a retail account, you're going to need 25,000 cash, which is going to give you four to one buying power or 100,000 in BP. Again, there are different places you can trade and you have to look into alternatives and you should look into what's out there, whether you have a lot of money or a small account. You should really look into it. But even $200 a day is $1,000 a week. Hey, that's money. That's profit. Many people that are trading the market are losing. So you can take a small account and grow it. I know people that are doing that. It's very beneficial for you to take it slow when you have a small account. We've been talking about this a lot, at least not just in 2022, but even back in 2021 about financial freedom and what's happening in this world. Having an extra income coming in is important and people have time now to work and trade from home because they're still working from home. Now, if you want to learn my system, you can learn it in the Golden Gap course. It's a class I teach a few times a year. I did not do a class in January. The first class of the year, it will be in February, the end of the month, February 26th and 27th. Don't delay if you wanna sign up. Um, I know it's gonna be crowded already. I have some people signed up because it is the first class of the year. I'm just really busy right now. So I do classes when I can on the weekend. The tuition is $69.99, classes online. We trade during the week. Classes are always on the Saturday and Sunday for this big class because it's a 14 hour class. If you want to do the combo, if the trends is March 1st, 11 to 3. So you get a discount with that. It's $74.99 for both of these classes. Okay. So great 2021. 2022 has already been better. Uh, we're only a month and a week into the year, but I'm excited about what this year brings. And I'm very excited about moving forward the rest of earnings season, the rest of this year. If you'd like to sign up, if you have questions, if you'd like a trial, to the trading room. Email me, Melissa, at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great day, everyone.